much will it cost for you to shoot him? I need to talk to you. Yeah, no, we will. There's a bit where you and me have a chat, and the other guy, he gets up, and you have a chat with him too. No, no, I need to talk to you about Shirley, about her injuries. <laughs> So traumatised is my client by the events of last week that whilst waiting outside this very court she sustained another serious injury. When asked if she wanted to postpone the hearing, she declined. A testament to just how much she wishes to see justice be done. What have you done to her this time? I've done anything. She, this is what I'm saying. She's faking it. Are you ready to begin, Mr Grant? <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Mrs Fittick, perhaps you could tell us exactly what happened last Monday. Right, so me and Jessica, my youngest, we were looking for a new sofa. We give our last one to a centre for kiddies with leukaemia. That's us all over. Last week I gave my hair dryer to a diabetic. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, you will be given a chance to talk later, Mr Wilson. Please continue, Mrs Fittick. So, that's when we saw him, Mr Wilson. We recognised him because we'd seen him on the telly the night before. Anyway, Jessica looks at me with her little eyes and says, Mummy, can we ask him for his autograph? And so you approached him? <gasps> the look he gave me. I'll never forget it. Like, what's his name off Corrie? You know, he married Gail and drove them into a canal. Richard Hillman, Your Worship. The character's name was Richard Hillman. Make me an offer. So, he scribbles something. I say thank you. I know this is distressing, Mrs Fittick, but please go on. It was like a wild animal, punching, kicking. The doctors say I'm lucky to be alive. Okay, I can't listen to any more of this. Well, uh, sit down, Mr Wilson. There is nothing wrong with her. This is a complete farce. Either you sit down or I shall have you removed from court. She's deceiving you. She... Look, look, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Hey, Shirley, Shirley, catch! Oh! Ah! Ah! Get him out. Oh, why can't you just leave her alone? I, I, I thought she was gonna... I thought she was gonna catch it! Clear the court. Clear the court. Uh, hold on, hold on. I've, uh, I've got another tape. <sighs> Jesus. Hello. How's it going? Oh, oh. Could be worse. Yeah, I'm in mean, the courtroom. Could have caught fire, then as we ran outside, we could all have been run over by a tractor made of hammers. This is for you. It's the CCTV footage from the security cameras for that day. You're kidding. Hang on, don't you think maybe you should have handed this in a bit sooner? Well, I was going to, and then I thought, what would Andy McNabb do? Right. I know we've never really got on. I know what you and the others think of me. You think I'm petty? Spiteful, a bully. No, no, that's. I'm sorry, I didn't realise you'd finished. That's really not true. I've seen what happened. What this lady is doing, it isn't fair. And there comes a point when one man has to say, Enough. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. She trembled under his gentle touch that was also really strong. She landed the helicopter and took off her blouse. What did you say? Nothing. Teach me how to love, she said. You're doing it again. Sorry. Is there like a, a guard school and where you do your exams and stuff? Who's the most famous person you've ever guarded? When you're in the public eye, you're a marked man. Uh, careers can be destroyed, 
and reputations ruined by the smallest lie. Friends, there have been times in my life when the cruelty and greed of other people became so familiar to me that I stopped noticing them. But today we caught a glimpse of something else, something so rare and delicate that we almost didn't recognize it. A small, good thing called justice. That kid was right, you are a fucking wanker. And now, on the stage of Her Majesty's Theatre, Princess Margaret meets David Bell, the producer of tonight's show, who then introduces her to the presenter of ITV's Saturday morning show, Tommy Boyd. Here's Maggie Philbin and Keith Chegwin. Now being presented, Roger Stevenson with Peppers. Such elegance. Kamal from Kajagoogoo. <laughs> Such grace. <laughs> Roger de Corsi with Nookie. Thank you. Oh, look, look at that smile. Look at that smile. Bronsky we are just melting. <laughs> Russ Abbott, alongside some of his madhouse team. Dustin G. Someone said to me the other day, how do you cope? I mean, you're 16 years old. You, you've met all these famous people, and you've got this amazing career. Aren't you afraid of being just another flash in the pan? I said, Scylla, I know the type of act you're talking about, the novelty act, nothing more. The difference with me is that I have got talent. Oh, no. It's the others that should be worried. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm going on Crikey, it's Saturday next week. I'm going to make Alison Moye disappear. And then we're doing a phone in. <sighs> beep, beep, danger when the phone jacker gets on the line. Totally legitimate comedy at five past eleven. But next up, Earl re-meets a dating disaster. Poor Earl.